Well, hello everyone. I'm Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sportfish boat. Now, I do this at nights and weekends in my spare time. And um, let me tell you, it's been a lot of spare time, like years of spare time. And, um, you know, I just enjoy doing it. And someday, hopefully, I'll have a boat that's nice and in the water. Uh, but that's for the future. <laughs> we just take it project by project here on this channel. Um, and uh, here's another project. Uh, you're getting a little bit of a preview, actually, of some of this stuff in the background because I'm filming this um, a couple days before I'm putting the video out. And um, I built this panel in uh, December of 2020 and, and the beginning of January of 2021. So we're, we're a bit behind, five months behind here on the, the actual uh, putting the videos out and putting them together. So you're seeing a little more work here done than what you're going to see when I'm actually building this thing. So anyways, uh, I'll put up a picture of what the factory had, if I can dig it up right now, and uh, show you what kind of they were doing. It might be from the port side, I don't know. We're on the starboard side. But basically it was two panels, just like I'm going to do. There was one here, and then one from here down. Uh, they had them permanently installed. They, they drilled through before they put any of this. It was different when they did it, but whatever they had here, they just screwed into this and, and then put this over the top of it. And then back here, before any of this nice trim was on, they screwed into the wood behind it and attached it that way. So the bottom was kind of dangling around a little bit. Uh, just had some caulk in it. But this has been all redesigned um, by me uh, to try to do it the way I want to do it and the way I think it should be. So uh, if you haven't been following along, that's what's going on here. So anyways, we're going to build two of them. We're going to build one for the port side as well. And uh, they won't be finished in this episode. But they'll be finished enough to fit in here. And uh, that's what we're going to be working on. So hope you enjoy it. And I'll um, see you at the end of the video. All right. So here's the update on the template. That's all I'm doing. And now I'm doing it that way because I want all the pieces to be in the same plane. I mean, I could have put that bottom piece up over the top of the two vertical ones and just hot glued them all together that way. But I've done that before. And it's a little more difficult to transfer onto the plywood later on. From the template so i prefer to do it this way it's a little more work but not really that much now i'm going to put another horizontal piece right in the middle i'm going to do another one behind this uh, piece here at the top <laughs>
we're back at the boat. I finished cutting out these pieces yesterday in my driveway. And uh, once I cut them with that circular saw, I went around with a router and a straight edge and kind of straightened up all the edges and trimmed them to where I wanted them to meet the template. And um, now I just brought them over here today. Now, uh, I haven't done anything with them yet. I just kind of put this in here. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on this one in this corner to get it to sit just right, a little more sanding, um, fiddling around, but it's not too bad. The port one actually fits even better than this one. I have to do, hardly have to do anything to that one at all. Uh, once I get that done, uh, I'm not going to film any of that. Uh, I'm going to start working on these pieces here. I have two of these. They're about four inches wide. I've already cut them to length, and they're going to go back in here, one on each side. That'll give the panel a 90 degree turn, which it needs to have in this corner. Uh, and that's all I really need to do to this piece is kind of put a notch in the bottom here so it'll make it over this lip, this curb right here. So I'll do that, and then once I get it back home, I'll rip it down to an equal width. Uh, right now it's just a rough cut piece and it's not even. So I'll do that over there. I'm going to leave it pretty wide, four inches, so I have enough room to do everything I want to do to attach it to the hole and attach it to the next panel that's going to go from here all the way back. So um, four in the four inch width is going to work for that, I think. I'm going to be fiberglassing these panels I've been working on today, just the back sides. And um, I'm not going to film it, uh, which I feel kind of weird doing because I'm so used to filming it, but I have to, I have to make a break somehow. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to use is the same stuff I've always used here. i got a whole box of this stuff um, that I just use for the abrasion resistant properties of it. And um, tons of remnants and things. So I'm going to go through this box and pick out a couple pieces that fit these four pieces and uh, do some fiberglassing on this today. Get this done. Alright, so I got these fiberglassed last night and yesterday afternoon and uh, they've been drying overnight so I'm just gonna let them dry all day today and uh, probably sand them either tonight or more likely tomorrow morning so uh, they look like they came out pretty good and uh, yeah so uh, while these are drying I'm gonna move on to another project okay so I just cut a rabbit into both sides of this piece of mahogany um, and I used this bit here, I'll spin it a little so you can see. Uh, couldn't cut the full depth in one pass. I tried to go, I wasn't even going that deep on the first pass, probably half of what I wanted in the end. I thought that would be okay, and it was chipping out a lot. So I ended up having to just do multiple passes and just bring it up slowly, slowly until I got to this point. And there's just a little bit of chipping here, you might be able to see. So that's not too bad. I'm going to round this whole edge over on both sides. So that should be okay. So sometimes that happens with pieces of wood. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I routed with this before and I have, have it not chip out at all. So it might be just the way the grain of the wood is on this particular piece. Anyways, we're done with that. Now we're just going to go over to the table saw and rip this piece into two. So in my haste to save my camera from the potential rain, I put it away and then I realized I had to cut a slope on this edge. So I had split the piece right here. Uh, so I just had to go back, tip my saw blade and uh, cut both pieces at that type of an angle right there. Now the piece sits kind of this way and I cut the slope because the panel's on this side and if any water got behind the panel it would be able to just um, roll off the back edge here without collecting potentially in this corner. So that's why I did that. Now once that was all uh, cut and I went around and sanded on a, with a sanding block and some 80 grit sandpaper these corners here around everything over nice. 
All right, so it's a chilly morning here. Uh, it's actually going to snow today, so I'm going to make this brief. This is just a little update. I managed to get over here yesterday after uh, getting all the cleat stock made, sanded, and, and together. And um, in the morning, I actually sanded the back sides of these panels that I fiberglassed. So this is the starboard side. There's the two pieces. And just sanded the edges and kind of got them ready here to fit them up. And um, then I only had about an hour and a half to come over here and do something. So I didn't even bother bringing my camera equipment. I just came over here and fit these pieces. So, you know, my original idea with these panels was to run this cleat along the whole bottom. But after thinking about it, I was realizing that really, I just needed it in a couple places to hold this thing. So... That works out good. I didn't have enough stock cut up to do it all through the big panels that are going to be behind me anyways. So this worked out good. I just had to put one on each end here. And so it, it really fits in nicely here. You can see. And, uh, oh, Holly, I'll show you this first. I just screwed them through on this side. Um, just to hold them in place and locate them. And uh, they fit nicely together. Put this panel in and then drop it down and those cleats catch on the lip here and uh, that's how it fits in there nice and tight and secure now i have to secure it at the top area so i'm going to secure it up in this corner maybe at the might have to secure it down here on the side I'm not sure yet and um to do that this i cut these pieces of wood yesterday as well this is an inch wide piece of mahogany. It's like two inches in this direction. And it's going to go on the bulkhead behind behind this panel, obviously. And uh, that's what I'm going to be able to screw into here. I still have to fit these. I just cut these rough this morning when I got over here. Uh, so I'll have to be putting those in, attaching these to the bulkhead. Uh, and then I've got this smaller piece. It goes on the end here, and uh, it's going to be like a 90 degree angle. But I didn't put it on because I wanted to mark uh, this, the line of the back of this panel to locate this piece here. So I could stretch my arm back here and, and kind of mark it with a pencil. This panel is actually a little bit warped. So even if I get it lined up on this side, that corner was a little twisted. Which will be fine once I screw it in. It'll straighten it all out. It's a pretty flexible panel. Just 3 8 plywood. So I thought I'd just give a little closer look at how it's coming along here. Getting along the bottom. And then a view from the back side. Okay, so you can see I have this panel kind of clamped down to the sawhorse. Got the other one behind me here, too. And I built these little 90 degree bracket things. They're just three quarter inch plywood. I wrapped them in uh, packing tape around this corner so they don't stick in the end. And so, yeah, I have them clamped with these two clamps to the panel. And then uh, this is the piece that's going to go on here. And uh, I'll just clamp that with these. You know, once they're once I got all the epoxy on there, I'll clamp these in place like this, and uh, that'll be it, just like that. Ninety degrees, and uh, we're good to go. Okay. So I wouldn't use these little brackets if I was doing any kind of fine cabinetry, because <laughs> they're close to ninety. They might be a little off. But in this case, it's not a big deal. Uh, this will work perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like in the end. I'm going to use 610, I think, thickened epoxy in the tube just to make it easy. It's all going to be reinforced in the back here in the end. And, uh, and then I'm going to fiberglass over this whole thing here. So it'll be plenty strong when I'm done.
Okay, well here's the panel, or one of them, after I've taken the clamps off of it. Flip this way, let's see the, the other side. And um, now what I think I'm going to do tonight is uh, I'm going to sand this corner down. And I'm not really thinking that it's going to be, I mean it's epoxy, it's on there, but if this gets banged around, I'm just thinking that this isn't going to hold super well, especially since I'm going to be rounding over this entire corner over here. So it really needs something in the corner. Now I could do a fillet down here if I want to, but I think instead I cut these little triangular pieces here. I'm just going to just epoxy these in in the corner like this. And then uh, once, that, once that dries, then I'm going to do a little bit of fiberglass over the top of the whole thing just to tie it all in. Uh, so I'm going to do that tonight and uh, see how that comes out. Okay, so here we are about 15 minutes later. Pieces are in. I just spread some of this mixture of epoxy and colloidal silica on the back side of these pieces of wood and then just kind of squished them in there. And then just cleaned up the excess on the edges. So we'll let this dry overnight and um, tomorrow I'll give it a quick sanding. It's not going to need much. And then we'll put some fiberglass tape on there. Okay, so I'm going to do some more work on these, but I'll give an update. Um, last time I gave an update on these, I uh, I just installed these pieces of mahogany, this one piece of mahogany in the corner here, stiffen up the corner, and I had to clean it up with some sandpaper, so I did that. And once I had that finished, I installed some of this two inch fiberglass tape over the top of it. Uh, I wasn't putting this on here to tie it into the panel or anything like that. Um, it's epoxied in there, I didn't even do that. I just did it really to have something over the top of the wood. I epoxied these little pieces now. I think I might have been calling these cleats before, but I'm going to call them clips from now on because they basically clip. That's the function of them. They, they're, clip, they're clipping the panel in place. If I used West Systems or any kind of other kind of epoxy, it would kind of build up on here and just tighten the gap and if these panels probably wouldn't fit. I'd be sanding it and messing around. But this is the, um, this is what it is right here. It's um, Smith's Clear Penetrating Epoxy Sealer. It's a two-part system. This is part A, part B is right over here. It's the same size container. Um, and um, you just mix them one-to-one -one and then uh, put it on with a brush or whatever. You don't, can't spray it on, they say. You got to put it on with a brush or a roller or something like that. You could soak the wood in it too if you want to. Uh, well, what you do is you um, you just keep applying it, and it just keeps soaking in. So I just kept doing it until it was kind of just sitting on the surface and not really soaking in anymore, and then that was it. So then we'll flip it over. I actually round it over this outside edge with a round over bit, my largest one I had, in my router table. And you see how the corner is there with the stiffener in there. So that's done. That came out really nice. I like that. So good there. So what I have to do on this front side of the panel is um, when I, once I put these clips on, I'll fill these screw holes on the heads of the screws with a total boat, total fair, epoxy based fairing compound. I've used that many times before. Um, so I'll fill these in with that tonight. And then there's some little areas here that I've kind of marked with a pencil, you probably can't see them, but there's little dents in the wood that i got to fill with that stuff. And uh, I'll also fill, there's a few little chips out of the edges of this wood, I'll fill those. Uh, okay, it's the next morning. I was spending a little bit of time just sanding these down, didn't take very long at all, just did it by hand with my block sander. And um, now I have it, have them over here in front of the heater. Well, this is one of them. The other one's on my workbench behind me. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I had a couple little pinholes in the filler 
uh, in two of the screws on this one and two of the screws on that one. Very small, but you get those once in a while, you try to avoid it, but you get them, so you gotta fill them. So I'm trying to heat these up and let that filler dry so I can bring these over to the boat and fit those in. So once all that's dry and I'm ready to bring them over, I'll do a little bit of a more close-up type of thing on these to show you, or maybe even at the boat. Alright, well that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed watching me uh, build that panel. And um, consider coming back and watching the next episode, or watching previous ones if you haven't checked any of those out. So until then, have a good one, and we'll see you really soon, right here on Renovations Workshop.